Welcome to Jewish Cinematheque, where we meet some of the important faces involved with films that tackle aspects of the Jewish experience. Today, I'm joined by Israeli writer-director Ruthie Pribar and actor Shira Haas. Their film, Asya, was the winner of Israel's Ophir Prize for Best Motion Picture, also garnering eight additional awards in a variety of categories, all going to women. At the 2020 Tribeca Film Festival, Ruthie won the prestigious Nora Ephron Prize, and Shira won the award for Best Actress in an International Narrative Feature Film. Camera person Daniela Novitz won for Best Cinematography. Asya is Ruthie Prevar's first feature narrative film, and audiences by now recognize Shira Haas for her Emmy and Golden Glove-nominated performance as Esti in The Unorthodox, and of course as Ruhami in Shtisel. Shira also appeared with Jessica Chastain in The Zookeeper's Wife and with Natalie Portman in A Tale of Love and Darkness. Когда ты была маленькая, мы так засыпали с тобой. Только когда я пела, ты успокаивалась. Ложкой снег мешая, ночь идет большая. Да, ты малышка не спишь. Ты же знаешь, что нельзя смешивать лекарства со спиртным. Что случилось? Вика, тебе больно? Мне хотелось быть уля. Ruthie, Shira, welcome to Jewish Cinematech. Uh, Ruthie, let me start with you. Uh, this was a project that uh, took many years to come into fruition. Uh, you, you were at the um, uh, Khan Festival residence program. Uh, you were a graduate of the Sam Spiegel Jerusalem Film School. And over the course of this one year, you gave birth to two amazing projects. Can you tell us a little bit about them? Yeah, um, well, I started writing, this is a film about a mother and daughter. And uh, I started writing it in a way from the perspective of a daughter. Um, although it is told about from both sides. But um, actually when we were ready to shoot, just uh, all, we were already in pre-production and already casting. And then I found out I was pregnant. And um, I, I was actually so thrilled about being able to uh, direct while I was pregnant, but then we understood that no um, insurance company w was uh, willing to insure the production with a pregnant director. So um, very reluctantly, I had to postpone filming. And um, yeah, we basically it took another year uh, until my baby boy was born. I became a new mother, and uh, then I also directed a film when my boy was 10 months old. So it was quite uh, um, hectic those years, and, and I have to say, uh, while finishing the film, I was, uh, I was pregnant with my next child. 
So I, I gave birth to um, three children. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and when the film came out, basically my uh, my daughter was three months old when when uh, it it came to Tribeca. And now she's not today. No, no. <laughs> now I'm not pregnant. So this is it. Yeah. Well, I, I imagine you're pregnant with another project. <laughs> Definitely. That I, I, I am. Why, why, Ruthie? Why did you want to be a filmmaker? And and what motivated you to to write this particular story? Uh, well, I always knew I was going to do something around art. Um, as I, since I can remember myself, I was drawing and sculpturing and doing things, um, <clears throat> and just looking to find what I'm best at. And um, yeah, I, I mean, when I was in high school, uh, they opened up like a cinema club and uh, we started making very amateur films. And from the moment I started like, raising a camera and, and thinking about what to do and how to shoot things and how to tell stories, it just, it was obvious that this is something that um, I want to do. And it happened to be what I did since then so it's quite a few years um and with this film with Asya uh which is my first feature film it was it was based on something that is very personal experience um on the loss of my sister 15 years ago and it's not exactly about that and I mean it's not biographical and it's not what you see in the film is not what happened to me in any way um but it is it, my thoughts about um, having to deal with separating from someone and uh, from trying to figure out what's important and what you want to hold on to when you're experiencing something like that and realizing what are the things that are important in life uh, when you're in such a, a, a difficult situation. This, this was your first film uh, and, and, and it's amazing and it's just such a wonderful uh, opportunity to see the emergence of a, of a new filmmaker. Uh, you won the Nora Ephron Prize at the Tribeca Film Festival. The jury basically said that you showed excellence uh, in, in the work that you do. So, um, and yet you drew from a very difficult period in your, in your own life. Uh, over the course of the film, and, and you basically, you're saying that it was very different from the actual thing that happened to you, did you reflect on on your family, uh, on your own sister, on your mother, and and how did your mother react when when you told her you were making this film? Well, my mother is really a huge part of my life, so she was uh, she knew exactly what I was doing from very early on, and when I told her about um, starting when I started writing, she was very enthusiastic about it. Um, and very supporting. And uh, she was one of the first people to watch the film because um, I didn't let her read the script, uh, mm -hmm. but I did, uh, <laughs> I, I did, I, I took both my parents and I told them, let's sit and watch the film before it gets out, before other people see it. Um, I had no idea that it would take so long for people to see it with, you know, with COVID. Um, <clears throat> But I wanted them to be part of it and I wanted them to see it because I knew it wouldn't be easy for them to watch it. Uh, again, not because there's something specifically uh, about this, the story itself that is uh, linked, but more of the emotional impact um, that they understand very, very well because we're, we're blood, you know? So we, and we, we shared this very difficult experience together. So. Uh, a lot of things that are in the film, they know where they started in a way. So it wasn't easy for them to watch. And since then, they've watched it quite a few times <laughs> just to sort of um, get Spend familiar thinking, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, with the film. And I think by now they can watch it and not think about what is linked to them and how this reflects on our own story. And they can look at it as a film and as characters that are that have a distance from them. And it's so uplifting. There's, there's just no question about it. Um, Shira, Time Magazine uh, chose you um, as one of the 100 most influential people of the year mm -hmm. uh, in the actor category. Uh, you know, you've become uh, a, a sort of superstar um, over the course of just a very short period of time. You're only in your mid-20s. 
And here you are. Uh, what's it like to, I mean, I, now you are walking the streets of Tel Aviv, but you know, what, what's it like? Uh, how has that affected your life? It, coming in such a short period of time. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, well, it is amazing. And it's important for me to say that I really was, was not expecting that. Um, I always believe in what I'm doing in Asia, of course, also in an orthodox, but I feel like when I do a project, I am very concentrated in what I'm doing and committed to it, that while doing it, while working on it, while filming it, I'm almost forget that it will get eventually to people, to audience, you know, because this is what's happening and this is the most important thing right now. And then it, it gets there and you understand that this is also why you're doing that. And I mean, also unorthodox, of course, but also us so far in festivals and awards and in, in Israel, all over. I mean, it got so much love, um, really more than I expected. So it was surprising for me. And also, let's not forget that it happened this year in, in COVID. I mean, I remember the first time I realized unorthodox was a big success was when I walked out to my balcony just to. I don't know what to do. And I saw, because in Tel Aviv, there are so many buildings. So I saw from so many different TV screens of people, my face watching Unorthodox. That was like the first moment I realized that the show, something is happening. So in a way it's bizarre and it's upsetting, of course, uh, COVID, but in a different way, now that I look at it, um, it helped me in a way to be kind of like in my safe place, to be kind of like um, surrounded by people that I love. So, yes. So yeah, this has been uh, this year and I'm still uh, processing it, uh, but I'm definitely very, very, very grateful also for Unorthodox and also to finally be here and also and talk about Asia, which I'm very, very proud of. The, the jury at Tribeca, uh, that awarded uh, Ruthie the uh, Nora Ephron uh, tr Prize, wrote the following about you. Her face is a never-ending never landscape in which even the tiniest expression is heartbreaking. She's an incredibly honest and present actress who brings depth to everything she does. Uh, so that's, true. Oh. That's okay. <laughs> Uh, you know, watching you in Asia um, over the course of just one scene, the expressions, how did you and why did you become an actor? And, and how did you develop your skill, your talent? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <clears throat> well, I, I never thought I'll be an actress when I was a child, let's say it like that. Because I said younger in an interview like a few weeks ago and people got mad at me. So when I was a child, uh, <laughs> um, I really did not want it. But then I, I studied at a theater major at school and I kind of liked it. But I was a teenager. I kept doing my homework, studies, exams. Um, and then a casting director approached me. Uh, just because she saw that I, I studied in this major and she said that if I want to come to an audition. And I almost, I'll make a long story short, but I almost didn't get to the audition. I almost missed it. But eventually I, I went, <laughs> something, an instinct within me told me to go. And it was uh, Princess, it was the first feature film that I did. Um, and this was the moment I think where I completely uh, fell in love and understood that this is, if, and I will do whatever I can in my control to keep on doing that. Um, and I felt like, um, I don't know, I'm a very curious person. I'm a bit of a nerd, some will say. I love to learn new stuff. I love to learn new cultures, new languages. I have to explore. I really enjoy sometimes even more than the filming moment, the three to one action. I enjoy the research and the rehearsals. Um, and honestly, I'm, I'm very lucky to work with amazing creators and directors, um, of course, as well. I mean, it's just also give me inspiration to work with them. And also, I mean, the materials, I'm very, very lucky to work, especially in Asia, but also in other projects. I mean, to work with 
materials that are exciting for me that I want to go deep and I have people and company and partners to talk to about that and it's really about curiosity and and, and keeping the creativity up for me so well, uh, well Ruthie you certainly gave her something uh, of a challenge uh, <laughs> yeah. she had to develop this character and it was shot as as our audience probably understands movies are not shot uh, chronologically so here Ruthie you had to have her have Abshira play different parts at different times out of sequence. How did you do it? Can you maybe share, Ruthie, share, you know, maybe a trick in terms of how you directed and Shira and how you reacted and, and, and got ready for each scene? Well, basically what we did is get to know each other. That's the way I, I mean, that's the way I work with uh, actors. Um, we just talk and talk and we get to know each other and we talk about our lives and we talk about things that we've been through and we think how things in our life resemble uh, things that are going on in the film. And it can be me talking, it could be Sheila talking, it doesn't matter because uh, this way we get to know each other. So when we get to the actual rehearsals about the, with the scene, um, we already have so much with us that we can take and talk about. And I, and I would say, okay, um, here you feel like uh, what we talked about before, what, what you told me. So we would do these kind of, you know, back and forth uh, through the characters in our own lives. And um, I mean, and, and that's what we would do in terms of uh, the emotional uh, aspect of the, of the scenes. And if you're talking about the physical, because she had quite a challenge, as you said, the film was not shot chronologically. And um, this disease that um, Vika has in the film is very chronological in the way that um, every time that, uh, let's say, your hand is unable to move, it cannot move in another scene that comes after that. So uh, Sheila had to be very, very precise about what stage she in in this illness. And um, uh, we had this chart uh, for every single scene in the film where she knew she, that she that she would not need to know, to, you know, she, she doesn't need to make anything up. She has to know exactly what she can do and what she can't do. And we really worked about the specifics of the details of how she moves her hands and legs and what um, organs are, are problematic in each scene. So she, I think we had to cross that barrier in a way, the physical aspect of it, and for, for Shira to be able to really act emotionally and not from the physical aspect. Exactly. Yes, I mean, each each part in the chart, each stage really has its own color. I mean, back then, if you would tell me, um, if you will say scene 31, I would probably know back then when we filmed, uh, what scene is that? Right now, no, I'm being honest. <laughs> uh, it's been a while. Uh, but that was, I mean, we were, this, I mean, this script as well, it's very, very specific, really. I think, if, I mean, Every scene, there's a reason why it's there. Every moment, this is really thanks to Ruti. So it was also so important for me to be specific and really to know um, what I'm doing. Also in order to control, you know, my physicality as the character, but also in the real time while filming it, to really be free to act and to respond to Alona, to my other partners. Alona who plays us and she's also amazing. It's important to say. Um, so, and we, we also had lots of rehearsals, um, also physical, also emotional. Um, we just really, in order also to be very specific, in order also to get to know each other. Uh, yeah, it was really, we were all kind of like in this world. It was like, I, I don't know what I did in this period of time beside us. Yeah, I, I think like, that was my life. <laughs> when you were a, a, a young, when you were a child, you yourself had some kidney issues, kidney problems. Yeah. and. It was very serious. Do yes. you think that in any way impacts and affects the way you act? Yes, I think so. Also, I think um, it's really, it's, you can't even compare what I had to what Vika had, really it's completely different. But I think that what is why one of the reasons it was also very, very emotional for me to play this role immediately before I even read the script and fell in love with it, just with the idea of it. Um, and I think that, yes, I mean, it's hard to say <clears throat> because I was very young. Um, so I don't remember as if before, you know, I don't know what 
it's really like the beginning of my life almost. Um, but, but it was I, oh, it was a trauma, and 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 you're dealing with trauma. Exactly. In the film. Yeah, and I think like everything that happened to us, I think it shapes us, um, and I think it made me who I am for better, for worse, you know, but it did, it did, it definitely did. I think I was really mature also as a young child and I was yeah, drawn to psychology. I mean, to act, I think it did um, made me who I am. It's hard to say, but yeah, I'll choose yes. Ruthie, the film is is about a mother and daughter. Um, you cast uh, Alona Eve uh, as the mother and, and it's, it's incredible how um, Shira and Alona looks so much alike that you know it's almost like the sister commercial uh, there's even a scene at one point where somebody says you two are sisters um you chose to have a russian mother and daughter why mm-hmm. um well when i started writing the story i knew i wanted a mother and daughter um that um their relationship evolves throughout the film and throughout Zika's illness and um, part of it would be due to the fact that um, they have no other options. They have no circle of friends or family that surrounds them. That So they have no choice but to rely on one another mm-hmm. and to really get closer. And um, for that to happen, I, I, I chose for them to be immigrants so they wouldn't have that. So they would have to be together. And uh, it just made sense for them to be Russian because they're such a large Russian community in Israel. Mm -hmm. Um, So this is how it chose for them to be Russian. And it really brought a lot of other layers to the film because they speak in different languages Mm -hmm. and uh, they come from, in a way, different backgrounds. And it sets this difference between them. And I also, I had to learn Russian uh, so I would not be clueless uh, on set. Um, so uh, pretty early on when I started writing, I went to learn Russian and realized that it was incredibly difficult language and that I would not be able to really speak it, but it did make a difference. I mean, it did the hide me. The hide yeah, it is. It is much harder than Yiddish. Much harder. You, <laughs> you, 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 <laughs> you learn Russian and, and Shira learned Yiddish. Okay. Uh, and, Russian know. is so much harder. So mm. much, really. Uh, Wow, I admire it. I'm really I'm a fan. <laughs> mother, mother talks to daughter in Russian uh, mm-hmm. and some Hebrew interspersed. And, and Shira, you were always talking back, except at one point, I think, where you said me too or I love you uh, in Russian. I had like a few sentences. Yeah. Nothing oh. too challenging. It wasn't <laughs> yeah. too challenging. Yeah, but it was challenging. No, yeah, the biggest listen. challenge, exactly. The biggest challenge, because as an actor, you don't just stay your lines, right? You respond to what's happened in front of you. I mean, and if suddenly an actual, uh, my partner will say to me differently, I, I might react at this moment different because of that. And because I didn't know Russian and Alona, Asya talked to Vika almost only in Russian. There was a point that I, I, I some of the scenes I asked her to record it for me so I could listen to it. Cause there might be a specific word, for example, that's like the fire in Vika or something like that. So I needed to know that what the word sound like. And also, the, I mean, in the script, it was written in Russian and he- Hebrew. So her Hebrew line, I think, I think I knew them also by heart in our scenes because it was important for me to understand exactly what I'm responding to. Um, and it was challenging a bit in the rehearsals, but then at the, at the shooting, when we shot it, I almost felt like I understand her. I might not be able to respond, but I know what, I know what you're saying. And she's also such a good actress, so you could really also understand Alona's sense and meaning. So, but it was challenging in the beginning. Yeah, the film has so much uh, visuality to it. So much, uh, you know, the hues, the colors, uh, the cinematography. Your cinematographer also won an award at Tribeca. And now here's a clip from the film Asya. Good. 
красиво тут. Карл. Мы решаем и тур Карл. Вот он сейчас Макс Кеннин. Так, ты идешь? Улыбнись, что ли? По зарплате сюда ушло. Давай, неженка! What is what's the next project, Ruthie? Um, well, there are a few. I don't know which one will come first, but um, there's another feature film, and uh, I'm working on a limited series. Uh, hopefully, it's going to be shot in the states. Uh, yeah, so a lot, a lot of things to come. I don't know yet. <laughs> well, it's it's great, and it's wonderful watching you as a new filmmaker. And by the way. The film won the Ophir Award for Best Motion Picture of the Year in Israel, yeah. and uh, an additional eight awards, all for women. You had an almost all-woman uh, uh, crew, which was right. quite incredible, and your two stars were women. Uh, it, it was just terrific, and, and what a step forward for, for women making uh, movies. It's, it's terrific. Shira, uh, it... We've learned that um, executive producer Barbara Streisand has brought you in. You're going to be playing Golda Meir in the upcoming series Lioness, Golda Meir in the Nation of Israel. How does that feel? And are you excited? I'm very excited. It's still uh, pretty soon to talk about it, but it's still in the writing. And it will also take time till we even uh, shoot it and film it and get it started. But it is very, very exciting. We're talking about the younger years of Golda. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I saw I saw a post, I think, or something that someone sent me that they're posting Golda in her 70s and saying, how, how can Shira has it? And I said to myself, do people know that Golda was not born 70 years old? If they don't, someone needs to tell them that, right? Uh, so it's about her younger years, which there is so much to tell, and she was such an amazing, complex, strong, way before her time uh, kind of woman. And I'm very, very excited about that. So yeah, it's in the making. <laughs> you better work on your smoking skills. Oh yeah, and the American <laughs> accent, there are a lot of stuff to do there. <laughs> um, what, a, what a wonderful film. Uh, the film is Asya and, and what, what Ruthie and Shira have done is they've really put women at the forefront uh, in Israeli cinema, which is such an exciting development. Uh, thank you so much. And, and really, Hatzlacha, lots of uh, success to both of you. And thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, really. Bye-bye.